at that floating bridge. Floating bridge, uh, where I first heard the term, was uh, from a Sleepy John Esty song called Floating Bridge. He was talking about getting caught in a flood. But what we're doing, I think that the floating bridge is a bridge between different kinds of music and different kinds of people. I was going down and I threw it up my hand. Going down and I threw it up my hand. I was going When I was uh, four years old, I went down in the basement with my mother. She was doing the laundry, yeah. and there was a guitar hanging on the wall. I didn't know what it was down in the basement. I said, what's that? She said, that's, that's a guitar that used to belong to your Uncle George. And I said, can I have it? She said, yeah, sure. It's been down here for a long time. She gave it to me, and I was gone. That was that. And I smacked on the low E string. I just laid it on the ground in front of me. And I smacked that low E string, and I watched it vibrate. And and I kind of, I just got it. I went, oh, the vibration makes the sound. And, uh, you know, not to get too Om Shanti about it, but it was like, oh, the big note, you know, yeah. out in the, I used to have this dream about a giant guitar string out in space, just vibrating. I had that dream for 30 years, yeah. off and on, you know. I was born in January 1952. I don't think there's a more perfect time for a guitar player in America, a white guitar player in America, to have been born, you know? I was 17 in 1969, I went to Woodstock, you know? It, it, it was like, I was exactly the right age for this thing that blossomed into the gigantic thing it is now. When I was a little kid in Pennsylvania, there was no other guitar players. It took me years to find another person that played guitar. I'm still excited. You know, I've been, I've been out on the road with Roger Waters for a couple of years now doing The Wall. Uh, we just got back from a, about three and a half months in uh, Australia, New Zealand, and South America. And I'm still excited on show days. I'm still like, all right, there's a yeah. show tonight. Yeah. You know, let's go, let's do it. Yeah. You know, it's, um, it's who I am. But suddenly one week, she seemed a little speedy and her song worked out of tea. The sirens came behind us, it was a bit before we heard it. <laughs> we are on Carmine Street in New York City, Carmine Street Guitars. My good friend Rick Kelly makes really great guitars back here. Uh, I have two of his guitars, a regular guitar and a bass that I've been using with Roger Waters since uh, I started playing The Wall with him almost two years ago now. And um, they're made out of this fantastic old pine wood that you see over here against the wall that comes from buildings uh, here in New York City. As you see there, number six Bedford Street, Chumley's, the old speakeasy bar uh, on Bedford, uh, 165 Bowery, the Chelsea Hotel. You know, you can't get more New York. So for me, a guy that's lived in New York for a long, long time now, uh, it makes me happy to, to you know, to, to play these, these great guitars. It's old pine wood, it's been up in these roof beams for 100, 150, almost 200 years, some of them. It's all dried out, the resin is all dried out, and the sound of it, the, the resonance of the instruments, it, it, it's fantastic. Personally, I was always a Fender Telecaster guy, and still am. Uh, my mom bought me a, a, a Telecaster when I was just a little kid. You know, I always say I traveled that Telecaster all around the world, you know, flew it around like an airplane. And um, I'm still, you know, connect, Fender actually made, uh, to my amazement and, and, and great honor, uh, they made a GE Smith model Telecaster that, that they still make. And uh, I'll run into people that say they bought one and, and they're enjoying it. So that always makes me feel good. With uh, Bob Dylan, when, when I was lucky enough to play with him for a few years, we, he would just call songs in the middle of the set, just play things that we'd never heard before, and you just have to follow it. And that, to me, is, is very exciting, very, um, it's very fulfilling. You know, when, when you catch it in those kind of situations, when you really catch it in front of a whole bunch of people, it's, it's really something. Don't do this so much with Roger, because with Roger, we perform the wall, and it's, you know, it's this piece he wrote, this long piece, and it's a production, and, and we sort of follow uh, a, a template over the course, now we've done 150 some shows, over the course of that to still 
you know, find the power and the energy in the music because it's there mm -hmm. if, if, if we as a band can access it. I, I mean, I've been playing the guitar for a long, long time, you know, over 50 years now I've been playing the guitar. And I always liked all kinds of music. You know, uh, I ain't much on opera, but other than that, I like everything, you know, so. And I came up through the bars, you know, I came up playing for many years in, in bars and what you had to do there was learn the popular songs of the day, you know, so I learned all kinds of styles and uh, tried to always find the good things. Now, you know, we did this little piece with, with, with Craig Finn and Hold Steady. A uh, couple years ago, I, I was in my car and I heard uh, a song of theirs called First Night. And I thought, this is a great song. You know, so I went on iTunes and I bought it, and, I was, and, I, and it's, just, it's just a great song. And he writes really good songs, yeah. you know. And, and that's what gets me excited now. All 12 apostles can't be seen from the shore All twelve apostles can't be seen from the shore Some hide behind the others It's always people taking pictures All twelve apostles were convinced that they were walking with their savior Good to see you man. Good to see you. Thanks for so, having me. Well absolutely now um, you've got a, a solo record out. And it's the first time I've ever done a solo record. Um, made it this past summer in Austin, Texas, and uh, you know, it's a little different. It's a little different than what I do in the Hold Steady. It's a little quieter, maybe a little more narrative, but um, I'm really excited about it. It's sort of, a, I guess the Hold Steady, I feel like, is like really a celebratory thing. Oftentimes, and this is maybe coming from a different part of my human being, where, you know, I, and I, I feel like I, there's a lot of sort of this kind of community and optimism and stuff that goes along with the Hold Steady performance where, you know, it, it, I feel like that some of the time, but this record allowed me to kind of explore a different part. Nice. Clear Heart Full Eyes is the name of the record, um, and it comes from the television show, sort of. On, on Friday Night Lights, the, when the football team would take the field, they'd say, clear eyes, full hearts, can't lose. So I was kind of playing with those words, and I changed them. I always liked that part. But you know that 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 show took place in Texas, so there's sort of a Texas nod, and also with clear and full, it's C and F, like my initials when I changed oh, it around. Like but uh, but the other thing was, I just thought kind of clear heart, meaning you know um, transparency, honesty, openness, um, and full eyes, meaning you know having experience and having seen things, and you know maintaining a a, a, a positive. Positivity and optimism and hope, um, even with you know uh, age and, and, and ongoing experiences. So that's kind of what the, the album title means to me. Okay, yeah. So so how did you wind up doing the record the guy, in Austin? The guy who um, the food's good. Yeah, the food's good. Yeah. Uh, the weather is not so great in July. Right. Um, I wanted. I, I worked with this guy Mike McCarthy who produced mm -hmm. the record, and uh, I sent him like really basic track. I mean like guitar vocals. You know, just. Garage band in front of a laptop, and and uh, you know, uh, and he was like, "You should, you have to put together the band." So he put together his guys, um, which was, uh, you know, I met them. I walked in the studio. I went down there for like five days. We talked about what we're hearing on the songs. Right. And then the band came over on a Monday morning. I shook everyone's hand. You know, met them for the first time. By Friday night, we had 14 songs tracked, and. Um, and I sang the vocals live, which was cool. That was like the first time I've uh, you know, done a lot of keepers um, singing live. And uh, you know, I, I, Mike, Mike kind of took the lead and got the people. And uh, I really liked the, the speed of Austin and um, you know, going out and seeing music. It was, it was real fun. Um, 
uh, that the one song that, that uh, I, I played with him called Western Pier. Even after we did that session, I listened to that song every day for a couple of weeks. I mean, that song really got me. And it's a very simple, musically and harmonically, it's a very simple song. But he's saying something, and there's something, you know, coming out of his heart there that that really got me. So I don't know how people do it, but I'm glad it still happens. Just judge. Look me over, said I'm sorry. You don't have to keep running. Do you best believe him? You can't take away all the parts of you. That make you do the things you do. Girl that lives inside my heart Keeps coming up the boulevard They roll up They pledge the loving Then they drive you Halfway to a breakdown Judge, look me over, said I'm sorry. Lost what I like about the, uh, the record is that he is such a good songwriter, and so you strip it down, it's all about the songs. Yeah. It's all about the lyrics, it's about the songs. And, and he certainly uh, can, can write simple words, you know, but the, the images and the stories uh, really strong. I'm, I'm, I'm really impressed with him. I'm looking forward to it. You have a, um, a unique voice, just the, 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 you know, the vocal, the sound of your voice. Who are your influences as a, as a vocalist? I, I, there's this talking thing I do um, that, you know, it's kind of right. halfway between talking and singing. Um, and that's a Lou Reed kind of thing a little bit, okay. you know. Um, uh, but certainly Springsteen was a big, uh, 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 sort of in his phrasing and all that, you know, um, which, you know, gets back to Dylan too, you know, those are... Those can, are now that you say that, I can hear it, I can hear it, yeah. yeah. How did Hold Steady come about? Hold Steady, I was You in come a, from yeah. Minnesota and you wind up in Brooklyn? I was in a band in Minnesota called Lifter Puller and uh, we were successful locally, not... Uh, we were trying to get out of town, you know, we just couldn't kind of get that next thing, so we got kind of frustrated. Everyone kind of wanted to get out of Minneapolis a little bit, try something new. So I moved to New York, and I was 30, or you know, 29. So I, I kind of thought that I was going to do something else. So I just worked in an office um, for two years, and uh, I went out one night and I saw um, the drive-by truckers, mm -hmm. and they looked like they're having so much fun. I said, I want to be in a rock and roll band again. That 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 looks like too much fun. I'm missing out. So. Tad, who was in Lifter Puller, uh, had moved to L.A., but then he moved to New York, and that was kind of right at the right time, and I was like, let's get the band together. But we were really um, unambitious. Well, at first we were, we were having these arguments whether we were going to A, play shows, or record. For a while we were just going to get together and drink beer and play music. Right. We thought that, that's the most fun. And then you know, we played a show, and then we played about 10,000 of them. So, uh, somehow we went from not not going to do anything to you know putting out five records in seven years, and um, you know spending most of the year on the road. But it's been a great run. I mean, it's uh, I feel really blessed to be you know start something at like 31, 32 years old, and and have it kind of um, this sort of second chapter, and, and you know be able to play music for a living and see the world. And, yeah, uh, it's it's really it's really been fantastic. Uh, I love the verse in in. Uh, uh, new friend Jesus, what do you say? Like he, he drove him in the car and you, he sold yeah. you his guitar. You, yeah, yeah, yeah. I drove mean, it all afternoon, sold me his guitar. Yeah, I was thinking about what could like, be cooler than buying <laughs> Jesus as a guitar? You know, I want it. I was can I get it from you? Will you sell it to me? <laughs> when you're in high school and like your friend gets a new friend and he's always talking about his new friend, right. and you're like, oh, this guy. You know, well, what if that guy was Jesus? You know, so right. that was the the idea of that song. Yeah. 
friend of my new friend's name is Jesus. Got a new friend of my new friend's name is Jesus. Got a new friend of my new friend's name is Jesus. Got a new friend of my new friend's name is Jesus. Well, one one of my great pleasures in my life has been to play with a lot of people that write good songs. Mm -hmm. I've just been lucky and, and gotten to do that. And, and I like to play with good singers. And I really like that thing of barely knowing the song, or in some cases, not knowing it at all. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, like you talk about Dylan, like there's some of those great recordings where you know Rick Danko hasn't heard the song yet. You know, <laughs> like he always is just, yeah. Just, but be, but it's so good. I mean, like the basement tape stuff is so. You, like I said, when we were playing, like you're kind of if 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 you're kind of rooting for it to all hold together. Right. There's this extra drama in the yeah. song. You're coming, come on, come on, come on. You know. Um, I love I love music like that. I love listening to um. You know those kind of recordings where things are loose, and that's what you know. That, that, that's something with the solo record. I had a lot of fun doing, like where the whole steady would probably are a little more rehearsed and. Um, right. But you know, we kind of these songs kind of have very simple structures, so you can kind of get out there a little bit. You know? Yeah. Um, somebody recently has has convinced me of this thing that it's a language, like Spanish or English or anything else, and there's only twelve words, <laughs> right? Because there's only twelve notes. In yeah, music, yeah, right? yeah, right. But now you can bend strings, and you can all. But basically, there's twelve notes. So the communication, you know, if I'm listening and you're listening and going, it's going back and forth. That's a pretty, uh, that's a nice thing when it happens, and um, I felt particularly on that song. That in, in, when, when you play with called. Dylan, is, that, is there stuff he does to kind of keep that sort of thing? Like, well, like I had always been a huge fan of Dylan mm -hmm. and of all the guys that had played guitar with him, like Robbie Robertson, sure. Mike Bloomfield. They were like some of my guitar heroes. So when I got the gig and I heard, oh, I, you know, I'm going to get to play with Bob, I got out all the books and was looking at the pictures, and I noticed that in almost every single picture, both Robbie and Mike were standing stage right, looking at Bob's hands. <laughs> and I went, oh, that's, yeah. so that's what I'll do, yeah. too. And you just, you know, follow. Because he's one of those guys that just, you know, like, like the old blues guys, like Muddy Waters and Howlin' Wolf and stuff, you never knew where those guys were right. go. You know, you look at, look at the live stuff of them. But to me, that's, that's one of the great, exciting things about rock and roll, whatever this music is that we play, you know, whatever you want to call it, uh, it is that, that seat of the pants thing is, yeah. is the great stuff. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. That, that's kind of what I was talking about, like this is what we call the snowflake, the snowflake jam. You know, every snowflake's supposed to be different. So there's just one, one song a set that you're just not going to see elsewhere. You know, it could be Good. a cover. Could be a really obscure B-side. Usually something we learn at Soundcheck, and you know sometimes they kind of fall apart. But the person at that show won't see that tomorrow night or the night before. That's great stuff. You learn it at Soundcheck, and man, you know it's not like we nailed it. Yeah. But we're gonna give it a try because we got like 20 other songs we're playing in the set that went pretty well. Yeah. And this one, you know, we'll see what happens. And you know what? The music police are not coming. <laughs> They're busy at the opera. Yeah. They don't care about us. Yeah, right, you right. Know? Yeah. So what? So you what? Know. You made a mistake. I and mean, if a rock and roll band has to stop in the middle of a song, it's probably going to get more cheers than, yeah, right. you know? Right. Like, you know, that's, that's fun. Now, one thing that I noticed about the album, um, Jesus turns up in mm -hmm. quite a few of the songs. Is that anything that you want to talk about? Yeah, or? well, I mean, I, I, you know, I was raised a Catholic, and I, I sort of have some version of Catholicism in my head, which I say the Pope wouldn't be too keen on. But um, I do go to church sometimes. But I think, like, what's interesting about Jesus and the Catholic Church, all, all of it to me, is the, the kind of not, is the things like forgiveness and redemption, which are two really beautiful concepts. And that's kind of how I, what I keep coming back. And uh, also, you know, um, when I think about struggle, um, whatever's, you know, not necessarily carrying the cross, but, you know, going on tour, going on a long tour, doing whatever you do that, that, that's not your favorite part of your day, um, that's kind of how... Where, going to work at the factory, right? Yeah, yeah. Where, where, I go, where I go about um, sacrifice and struggle um, kind of brings me back to those, you know, that, those, sort of the church. Um, I think it's, you know, I, I, I think... People are sometimes surprised because I, I, I think I, uh, 
you know, Jesus comes in my songs as, as you know, not, you know, not flipping the bird at him. It's, it's, it's um, you know, it's, a, it's an honest thing. And I think that catches people off guard at sometimes, but, um, but you know, it, it's more, maybe more on the solo record than the Hold Steady record, because uh, I feel like I can put more of it in there. Thank you so much, yeah, man. Thank pleasure you. talking to you. Pleasure fun. playing with you. Super, yeah, it was great. It was All great. Right. That was awesome. You know that one? I know. From camp when you were a little kid? <laughs> Uh -uh. What a friend we have in Jesus. Uh, I know this one. All our troubles for to bear. I forget this particular <laughs> lyric. But then you take it to the Lord in prayer. Are there troubles and tribulations, something like that? <laughs> Is there trouble anywhere? 